So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about this analyst development network that we set up across our ICS to join together analysts across health and care. I'm Andrew Barraclough, head of quality, safety and improvement analysis at Nottingham University Hospitals and also have a voluntary role as Director of Skills Development at AFA as well. So we know that there's a whole raft of what we might call networks and communities that try and bring together analysts of, of different kinds. And if your favorite network isn't on here, then apologies for that. It's, uh, we know that there's a lot of different networks and communities. They may operate at national levels, they may be regional, they may be local. So when we were thinking about, do we need a network across our ICS to bring together analysts? Obviously we were mindful that there's a heck of a lot that already exists out there. And we know that these networks and communities differ in various ways. So they differ in terms of membership requirements. They differ whether there's a cost associated. And in our case, we were creating something that did have a, a geographical requirement because we were wanting to think about creating a network to bring together health and care analysts across our ICS. And we know that those networks and communities differ as well in terms of their offerings. So do they offer webinars like this? So they face-to-face -face gatherings maybe as kind of branch meetings or do they offer uh, discussion forums? So lots of differences across those networks and communities that we were mindful of. So why did we want to create something? Why did we want to get together in what is quite a, a crowded space? Because analysts can, can join any of those networks and many of them are, are virtual now as well. So it's easy to, to get into a number of those different ones. But I think it was coming out of COVID. So the challenge that COVID created was, was pretty massive on the data and analysis side of things. And so we'd had to come together as analytical teams in different health and care organizations within our ICS in this case, because we had a series of, of rapid data and analysis and modeling questions to answer, and we needed to pull expertise and we needed to pull assumptions. So we'd come together through that. And one of the things we created was something called the Data Analytical Partnership Group. So this was analytical leaders from across our health and care system. And we decided that actually th this was really good that we now started coming together. During that period, we'd done a, a look, a skills assessment, looking across analysts across health and care in Nottingham and Nottinghamshire. And we come to at least 140 analysts and we suspected there were more out there that we didn't know about, but we didn't get together that often. So one of the things that we decided to do was create a analytical training and development program. So to start our work on that by creating some networks to try and create some opportunities for analysts to get together virtually to start with. Uh, and we're in the early days of this, so we'll, we'll see how it develops. One of the things we know is over the last few years has been quite an explosion of training and development opportunities for analysts. But often you will go out there it's great. Hopefully you've got some some knowledge, but we don't necessarily then share it, even perhaps in our organization. Certainly we don't share it across the health and care system. So one of the things that maybe the minimum we can do there is say, great, if you've been off on a training opportunity, but can you come back and tell us, would you recommend that for somebody else? Or would you say, no, this, this didn't really serve the need. That'd be really helpful for, for us to share. And the fact that we are an ICS that geographical proximity does create need, it does create opportunities. And there are occasions when we do need to work together. And we think by creating these learning kind of networks, it's just gonna build up relationships. It's just gonna help people get to know each other. And it is all underpinned in a broad sense by classic notions of developing networks and, and communities of practice, but that's not something that we've kind of been back and, and really studied in the creation of these things because we wanted to get things going. And there's a big shout out to Ryan Cope from our, our system uh, analytics unit, who has been instrumental in helping us uh, pull these things together and coordinating our efforts. But uh, he couldn't be here today, but happy to talk on his behalf. So we started to create various principles for these, these local analyst networks. And I won't go into these in detail, but they were just trying to set out what we thought, what we were hoping to achieve. So any comments on do these make sense are what you'd expect to see from networks and communities? Are there any kind of inconsistencies? The one to point out is we were very keen to say these weren't to be task and finish groups. These weren't ways that we were going to do 
project work. We needed to have other groups if that was the case where we explicitly needed to do something. These were about learning and sharing because we wanted to encourage people into them. We didn't want people to be worried about if they join these, they would suddenly start getting a lot more work. So definitely about the learning and sharing. The initial set that we started to create were these seven. These came from what we heard from our analysts across the different organizations and kind of things they were interested in, and also something that matches the priorities within our ICS. So having said that we're not going to give them task and finish project type work, we also wanted to be building analytical capability around some of the priorities for our ICS. So demand and capacity modeling, health inequalities, population health management, all big areas that we're doing some things in, but we know that there's a lot more analytical work to do. And also building on what, what Kate was talking about earlier, evaluation is something that we know we need to get into and move from beyond tracking measures into the kind of broader evaluations that Kate was describing. So that's something that we want to build up as well. Uh, we defined a, a leadership role. So asking for volunteers, people who are going to sign up to uh, lead these kind of networks. So again, setting out the kind of broad idea that we thought such roles might be to give people an idea of what they were going to be signing up to. But these are the kind of uh, areas that we think are going to develop as we get these groups going. So what does it look like for us? Well, within the NHS, we've got this future NHS site, which is a, a kind of a national platform. Within that, you can set up your own workspaces. So there's a variety of, of national and regional and profession specific workspaces. So that was one of the places that was easiest for us to set up something quickest. So we've set up a, an area there to uh, offer an introduction to what we're trying to do with these networks, what they are, who the leads are, get people involved. And then each of our networks has its own area then where we can post uh, things from meetings, resources, uh, have discussions, et cetera. And one of the examples, the demand and capacity that I co-lead with Ryan. So we know that demand and capacity modeling is is an activity that we have a lot of instances of across our organizations, but we don't necessarily do it as well, or we don't necessarily do it as integrated as we could. So we want to understand where does the mining capacity happening? What kind of work are we doing across short, medium, and long term? And then what are the tools, the techniques, the models, the assumptions, the data that we're using to bring people together to share that? So that's what we've been, been trying to do. Uh, and actually, it is quite uh, we found some kind of early results of there's some great resources that are out there, but it isn't natural necessarily for all the individual teams to know where those things are. So it's about joining up and linking and signposting to start with. And then we're trying to figure out if there are gaps and trying to plug those with uh, training and development opportunities. So it is very early days for us. Uh, we are learning as we go. And we'd love any comments or uh, anybody who wants to find out more or anybody who wants to share anything on one of those topics. Uh, and it's great to have Glenn here as well, because uh, very much obviously in your whole area and you lead on the evaluation, don't you say? So thanks for that. So whistle stop tour. Hopefully that was useful. <laughs>